I'm trying to go really slow, as slow as I possibly can. No adrenaline. CCA. Uh, yeah, it's very big. Redesigned 2001 by Page and Park. Got even bigger, twice as large. Very beautiful building, but twice as large. Program budget, the same. Um, econ economy, business plan, rubbish. Really, really rubbish. How to make money when you couldn't make money. Very big building. <laughs> Still didn't make any money at all. Crashed completely by 2006. Completely empty, apart from the bookshop, which is really sad with these little ba badges that said, I love CCA. But nobody loved CCA. <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> I didn't love <laughs> The Grateful Dead, thank God, The Grateful Dead. Um, they gave away all their music. Uh, people were bootlegging the music very badly, so they got their engineers to help them set up much better. So they could bootleg the, the music really well and steal the music to a high sonic quality. The music circulated for free for decades and they became the highest grossing band in the world. Um, that's our new business plan. Uh, <laughs> cafe looks a bit squeezed from here. Incredibly anal, uh, <laughs> I have to say. That was the style of the time, but you know, geez. Um, so um, we decided to give away the space. We couldn't afford to run the space. We don't have enough money to run the spaces apart from the exhibition space. New cafe, vegan, very nice. Lights, crappy lights. We're the only people here tonight who are trying to make our building crappier. <laughs> like, it's a really beautiful space, but it's too nice. So we're trying to make it crappier. So there's half the plants, and then there's the little circus lights. And then we got rid of the nice stuff and got crappy chairs. And then we did this. This is one of the best walls for crappy posters in Glasgow. Seriously, everyone's really proud of this. People kill each other to put stuff in this wall, and then it falls down. But it's really, it's really crappy. But people began to feel more relaxed in the place because it was really crappy. And then we give away all the space we can't use. So the cinema, the performance space. This was the director's office, a veritable ballroom. Um, and that's now an autonomous hack lab. Anybody can join it. Anybody can use it. They've got their own server. They've got their own equipment. We don't know who they are. We don't know what they do, and they've been there for 10 years. Millions of organizations have been working in there, and we don't know what they do, um, and we don't care. Archive room, the archive room, we didn't know what we had done. You know, 1973 to the present, we had no idea who the hell we were. So we've archived it, so now we know what we did, which means we might not make the mistake of doing it again um, and do something else, but at least we know who we are, and that's changed a lot of things. Then artists came along and started using the building in funny ways. Graham Etoff, um, they began to challenge the building really. So we had to hang those trees. I got a man came around and said, I would go to prison if it died and you know, someone died under a tree. I'd get a year in prison and 25,000 pound fine, which isn't a bad deal. <laughs> if, if you want to kill someone, run an, run an art center. So trees. More trees. It took seven months to figure out the health and safety because a lot of the stuff that looks like a whole weight is cosmetic, Page and Park. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 we all know. So, um, yeah, so uh, Graham also made the front into a kind of a you know, backstage room. So he made the foyer into a backstage dressing room. And then you go into the you know, beautiful foyer and you see the trees and everything. Um, but since we've given it away, we now work with 424 other organizations on a yearly basis. Uh, we do 1,200 uh, events a year, um, and we've got 18 other organizations in the building. And then uh, Tatum and O'Sullivan made this giant thing, which again was a kind of critique of the building and how it flowed out into the foyer, where it all died in the foyer. Uh, we'd let it kind of die. So they, artists have kept pushing us to keep changing the building. And this is an amazing thing, and it runs out here. And then it keeps going, so there's another two things as well. Um, but really, the artists began to say, well, this building doesn't work in many ways. And we began saying this building and the organization doesn't work in many ways. So this kind of complete crash gave us the chance to say, basically, why should we actually exist? And is there any point in us existing? If we should exist, what should we do? And how could you change the economy of the building? So the building is great, but the economy of the building doesn't work and didn't work. And the economy of many arts organizations just doesn't work. Um, so we're using the building and we're using these experiments and constant experiments to keep trying to think how can you actually change the way you actually fund art and not give all the money to me, sadly. Um, and this was the foyer as it used to be, which was an awful lot of space. It was terrifying to try and get to the desk. 
It was really scary to try and walk across that big distance and get to the desk. Um, and then someone would just kind of go, eh. So we kind of tried to change that. And now we've got that new foyer. And the new foyer is to try and, you know, there's a shop. There's two shops. So you might think, I know how to shop. And then you think, I know how to have coffee. And then eventually you might go and see art. But it's trying to make it actually familiar and friendly. It's obviously an anarchist bookshop. Um, <laughs> with a lot of big communist flags and stuff there as well. Um, but it's still, it's a bookshop. And you have to buy the stuff mostly, unless you can manage to steal it from Martin. So that... Is kind of, and Rob Kennedy then uh, took another step and hired another architect and then slammed a hole in the wall of the bookshop, that crappy bookshop, um, to make an entrance into the gallery. So we made a third gallery and got rid of the bookshop um, and then ripped the walls off the back there and then ripped the walls off here as well and then installed a ping pong table, which is a secret, <laughs> secret joke in CCA because in Third Eye Shut, they installed a ping pong table and played ping pong for about a year before the open CCA to general lack of acclaim. Uh, the bookshop, which was just awful, you know, it was just a nightmare with all these little cards and stuff you could send people, oh god. So, <laughs> so that's all gone as well, um, and we just keep coming back to what else can we do, it's, there's, there's a new hole in the wall, it's great, 16,000 pounds, not bad, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> and it's got a fire door as well. Um, so, but we keep thinking how else can we change it, so we're still in the middle of trying to think how we change it, we haven't changed enough and neither has the space. But the space is very resilient. It's really stood up to that. So we keep changing the space. We, you know, we keep doing stuff to it, and it still works. And we've moved all the spaces and turned lots of offices into creative labs and residency spaces, 17 residencies a year, things like that. Another gallery on the top floor, just to kind of keep trying to put more art in. Otherwise, we don't need the building. We don't need to be there. So if you're going to be there, try and make it into something for art. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>